Good evening and many thanks for watching KTN News. My name is Dennis Asset and today we get into a discussion about water. These as the world observed the World Water Day with the, with the term water for peace. Now what exactly are we talking about when we mean water for peace and World Water Day? How significant is that not only to Kenyans but the world over. This is a conversation that continues even as climate change becomes and remains a topical matter across the world. But today we want to talk about what a day for peace. And in studio with me is Amy Auma Odero, Director International Alert on my left. And on my right, that would be Julius Korir, Principal Secretary, Ministry of Water, Sanitation and Irrigation, Karibu Sana. And who will be joining us live on Zoom, that is Faith Akuom Aleta, County Executive Committee member, Water Services, Turkana County Government. Welcome on set, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we have this conversation. And now we just go straight to you, uh, Faith, in uh, Turkana County. Now, when we talk about issues to do with water in Turkana County, we realize the importance of water in that county, the fact that there have been issues to do with unsettlement with the people, uh, chaos due to water scarcity in that region. In terms of the county government in addressing this problem, where are we, Faith? Yes, um, Washa for Peace. This is a concept that emphasizes the potentiality of water to foster cooperation and trust among the communities and among the county, the countries. Um, uh, in Turkana County, uh, Turkana County lies uh, geographically, it's in borders. Uh, three international borders. That is Uganda, uh, along the corridor of Lokiriyama and uh, Letia, Sudan, along Nadapal and uh, and Nadapal and Loktogyo, and then uh, Ethiopia, that is uh, Todonyang and Kibish. Uh, also, Turkana borders the West Pokot. Uh, that is uh, cross county borders, uh, Baringo and uh, Samburu. Uh, it also lies in the region of uh, North Rift Valley and uh, with a long history of neighbors, both locally and internationally. Uh, water uh, for peace is one of the Water is one of the very uh, precious uh, commodity that uh, shared and uh, it's a resource that can help build uh, bridges and uh, dissolve tensions. Uh, along the Uganda border, the Turkana County uh, residents have been crossing to the other side of Uganda and uh, because of uh, the issue of water, uh, they have been able to trust each other with the Ugandan community, that is the Karimoja, for their livestock. And uh, they have stayed there for a good number of years uh, because of uh, the issues of water. And uh, along the border also... Uh, Faith, um, um, thank you. Faith, thank you for that introduction on um, the borders within Turkana County, the countries that you border, the counties and also the other communities. And it is on that note that we now come to you, Bona CS. Now, when we talk about water, um, PS, um, it is a very important subject that we, we ought to be talking about on a daily basis. Now, as Faith has alluded to the fact of the communities that they are around the Karamoja <laughs> from Uganda and how they all come together with regard to this matter of water, now water for peace. What is the national government doing in making sure that people of Turkana and just Kenyans in general get to have water and in return solve the matter of insecurity? Thank you so much uh, for this. Um, as I think as you've said, um, water is uh, very critical and the constitution of Kenya underpins 
that importance. And it is on the basis of that that the Constitution uh, under Article 43 says water is a right to all Kenyans. And actually portable, drinkable water that is safe is what is a right. And it's on the basis of that that the government has been investing heavily on uh, water infrastructure to ensure that water deficit regions of the country are, uh, are uh, served. As we are talking now, over the fa past five years, or since 2017, we've been able to increase the water coverage in the country, and that is uh, by definition of the UN, that water is within two kilometers, or within 30 minutes walk from your residence. Mm -hmm. We've increased that coverage from 50, around 56% to now currently around 73%. And this is because of the heavy investments that we've done. The other thing also is that the per capita income of water consumption in the country is quite low. Uh, at the moment, we are at around 465 cubic meters per person, that is per capita. And we are targeting over the next five years to increase that to over 600. And with that <coughs> also will mean that we will increase the storage capacity and make sure that uh, we supply water. Now, the regions that are north of Kenya, mm -hmm. that is looking at the northern belt, these are the Asal areas, they are water deficit in nature mm -hmm. because of the long drought, the climate action effect, uh, climate uh, change. effect, change effect. Those counties are really affected. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is, out of that you find conflicts do occur, especially during drought, mm -hmm. when uh, communities want water either for their livestock or also want water for the, their own use. Mm -hmm. So you find that there have been conflict in the past which has affected um, the peace with the, between the countries, uh, mm -hmm. between the counties. the counties. And on the basis of that, the country, about uh, two years or so back, we started what we are calling peace dams. Mm -hmm. These are dams built across boundaries of communities, which will store water during rainy season and avail it to the community. Mm -hmm. And also it coalesces communities around there. Mm -hmm. And because they have to share the resource, they will want to live at peace. So mm -hmm. such dams are at uh, Turkana, where we call Nakwetum. This is a dam that was built to bring coexist, um, people to coexist between the Karamoja of Tanzania, of mm -hmm. Uganda, and also the Turkanas of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Let me now, uh, uh, <coughs> along mm -hmm. the Pokot, mm -hmm. we have Kases Dam, mm -hmm. and also in Maralal or Marsabit, we have Forole. Mm -hmm. These three dams are very critical. And now we are expanding to the other parts of the country, especially between Pokot and Turkanas, be between the Ligeo Marakwets and Pokots, and also from Marsabit and the same, so that we can help build peace around those areas. Yeah. Emi, now, um, water is uh, an important aspect as both Faith and uh, PS have alluded to. It is an important aspect when it comes to enjoying peace in this country. And now, while uh, water Day and Water for Peace, you are part of that consortium and this conversation. Now, why is it such an important aspect for you from where we sit? Okay. Um, thank you very much. I think, uh, allow me to first start by um, saying International Alert is an interna international peace building mm -hmm. organization. Um, we work to address uh, the drivers of conflict um, and in a lot of places, and has already been alluded to, um, water becomes both a critical resource, but um, more often also a driver of, of conflict, conflict in many parts. Um, and so International Alert, as part of uh, the Water, Peace and Security Consortium, which is a partnership that brings together um, a number of organizations. One of them is IHE, or Institute of Water um, Education, which is based in the Netherlands. Um, and then you have Wetlands International, we have International Alert, of course. Um, and this consortium basically comes together uh, with the intention of uh, working around changing the conversation, um, if I can call it that, or um, thinking about how the opportunities that can come 
out of this seemingly cri a crisis, a water crisis, to an opportunity for building peace. Um, and so the Water, Peace and Security Consortium um, basically looks at four main things that we think are critical when it comes to addressing this, this problem mm -hmm. that has, has existed for years. So mm -hmm. even before the climate change discourse beca became you know, a conversation that is top on everybody's agenda, uh, conflict in the Asal um, was you know, um, something that was really common and we always talked about resource-based conflict and in this case pasture and water. And uh, that is why then this consortium targets to work on four main things. One is around creating an understanding. And when we talk about creating an understanding, it is not just um, general. So the general informal understanding about issue water resources is important, but also going beyond that to data. What is data telling us? What is technology telling us about water availability, water levels, and so on? And what do we need to do with this information to facilitate communities and other stakeholders to I would say relate better um, when it comes to the issue or the resource that is water. But we go beyond that because we recognize that water resources are not just water, it is also the resources that exist within mm -hmm. the water as a resource. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of conversations in Kenya, especially around the blue economy, um, around we have fisheries, we have all those things that are increasingly important mm -hmm. within the climate change discourse. Mm -hmm. And so starting to go beyond and think about the totality of water resources and then mobilizing stakeholders to come together and to create understanding collective action becomes very important and the other aspect that then becomes very critical around this is also learning and capacity that if you have data then you have to be able to interpret this data yes. and use it for purposes of ensuring that access is shared mm -hmm. that use that the management of these water resources are mm -hmm. critical and finally the most important thing that for the most part is underrated is dialogue mm -hmm. that can we have conversations? So uh, the PS talked about the peace dams. Mm -hmm. And yes, water can be a critical peace dividend that you can create positive contact between groups, mm -hmm. that people can start talking about addressing problems that, you know, that uh, have persisted, the recurrent conflicts, not so much from the negative you know, understanding that they have or experience they, ha they have of each other, mm -hmm. but specifically about how do we use this important resource mm -hmm. to build positive content, mm -hmm. contact to work together. So those are the four main things that, you know, the Water, Peace and Security Consortium and the partnership seeks to address mm -hmm. in relation to uh, the con. And now let's go to Faith. Um, and Faith, now when we talk about issues to do with water, it is uh, about access to this water. Now, uh, Buena Pies has alluded to the peace dam that is there, but then how do we make sure that these water actually gets to the people that it is not just in the dams that the county government is working in making sure that this water gets to each and every Kenyan living in Turkana so as the county government what are you doing what are some of the initiatives that you put in place to make sure that access to water is a reality in Turkana County Faith uh, thank you uh, in Turkana we we are using, uh, we are able to mobilize crowds, crowds uh, leaders. Uh, by mobilizing the crowd leaders, uh, we, the leadership of Turkana is able to uh, give them uh, information about uh, having peace, using water as one of the commodity that can bring peace between them by ensuring that uh, they share it uh, equally because uh, water become a conflict when uh, access is denied. When access is denied. Uh, also, we encourage them to have dialogue among themselves, whereby uh, a certain group can have their animals uh, getting water today, the rest can get tomorrow because of the population. And also, we, the county government of Turkana, through His Excellency the Governor, the Murkai Jeremiah, uh, have been able to to uh, to have uh, boreholes that is to avoid uh, human and uh, livestock conflict by uh, having the boreholes uh, for clean water for the access for human consumption. At least our, our, our community members that uh, have the livestock are able to access water 
from those uh, clean water from those uh, boreholes. Also, we have been uh, working um, towards increasing the the water pumps along the border areas. That is uh, because of the high population that is there. That is uh, along Uganda border. Uh, we have. We have a, bow, uh, a dam, a water dam, a water pan by the, the name Lokapiriti. That is Uganda and uh, Loima sub county. We also have another one in uh, Mogila, a water project that uh, have uh, a borehole and uh, also a dam beside it. That yes. Will, will be used for livestock and also used for agriculture. Okay. Now, and that is uh, mm -hmm. to enable the 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 pastoralist practice even the grow uh, pastoral agriculture. Faith, you've raised something very important, that is, with regard to agriculture. And I come to you, uh, Buona P.S. Now, um, water is essential, especially when you talk about agriculture, because even in the far north, um, what they're doing, even feeding their animals, is just agriculture. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the government making sure that um, Kenyans get to use the water that we have sparingly, that we introduce technology in distribution of this water, that when it's agriculture, there is smart agriculture that is being introduced for us to be able to use the little that we have in a larger way. Therefore, as the government, how are we making sure that this information gets to the person down there who needs this water for their animals, for their homes, who needs this water for their farms? Thank you so much. I think um, the Constitution underpins the importance and the role of public participation. And before a, we engage in any project which is related to water or any other kind of project, as a government, we engage in public participation. And that is when we get to know the priorities mm -hmm. of the communities. They get to tell us what they want, where they want the water uh, to be, uh, that is the water storage to be done, that is the dams. Mm -hmm. They also tell us how they will use that kind of water. Mm -hmm. And in case we are around boundaries where they've been having problems, they'll also tell you where you would where, which, how the, the layout of the dam should be so that one, they get to share it, but also they get also to get their autonomy as different communities. So what we've done is, and I think under the, this current administration, we've put the role of irrigated irrigation mm -hmm. agriculture. We want to bring into the fold over a million acres mm -hmm. of land under irrigation. And the main focus is under these areas of Asal, so that one, uh, while farmers uh, or while communities are getting water to drink and for the animals to drink, they are also able to grow pasture, mm -hmm. which can come in handy during the drought. Mm -hmm. They also are able to change their lifestyles by now embracing modern agriculture. And that's why the State Department for Irrigation, which is under our ministry, is, has put a, a, a very elaborate plan on how to have most of the northern Kenya, the arid and semi-arid lands, to be ir under irrigation. Working together with us, we are looking at, especially looking at the main drainage zones of northern Kenya coming from the Ethiopian islands all the way to Mandera, down to Wajir and Garissa, the Wasonyiro drainage system, so that we identify ideal locations where we can uh, build huge mega dams, which will store water, which happens during the rainy season, and then now regulate downstream and be able to improve uh, most of the agriculture around there. Because the irony at the moment in Kenya is that for a very short period of the month of the year, which is around three maximum, mm -hmm. there is surplus water, mm -hmm. which is destructive. Mm -hmm. Then for the rest nine months, it is drought. Mm -hmm. And we lack water yet. If we had done a bit of some storage, would have stored that water, which we regulate the flow mm -hmm. and be able to use. So we've laid out an elaborate plan as a ministry. We are also leveraging on climate financing mm -hmm. because we're now making water a climate change uh, 
uh, mitigation uh, factor mm -hmm. so that if now we are able to attract funds which are provided under climate adaptation, mm -hmm. we'll be able to build big dams which will store this water and be able to avail. Mm -hmm. And when that is done, we'll change, the, we'll adapt to the communities, we'll build their resilience and we'll also uh, propagate peace mm -hmm. around those areas. Mm -hmm. Now, Amy, uh Bona PS and Faith have alluded to the importance of water in matters to do with agriculture, supply, uh, making sure that this gets to the people. As international alert, when we talk about water for peace, what's the correlation? All right. So um, I think I will start by saying something that all of us seems to say a lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is water is life. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that we've talked about since um, we were born, I would imagine. And... The other thing is that then if something that has to do with your life mm -hmm. is affected or is threatened, then what choice do you have? And I would say that is the thing or that's the issue that has informed um, how we see conflict, the interplay of conflict and the water as a resource. So for the most part, issues of access. In a lot of places where you have scarcity, so uh, when Apias talked about the arid lands being um, water scarce for the most part. And so this is um, one of the ways in which then you start to find the interplay between water and the conflicts that arise. Because then everybody wants to survive, nobody wants to perish. And so access becomes a real issue. And then we do know, and um, uh, we, if uh, Faith just talked about the borders. And I think that was really important mm -hmm. because when you go to most of these asal areas, um, the borders exist, yes, but when it comes to access and use of resources, then the borders start to not necessarily uh, be as meaningful for the very reason that these resources, I mean, these resources are shared across mm. borders, including water resources. We mm. know that a huge population of Trukana moves to Karamoja mm. for purposes of accessing water at the dam. Mm. And so access becomes a critical component when you talk about correlation. The other factor is how do we govern the water resources that exist? How do we ensure that its utilization um, is, is in such a way that the different people are able to access it in the way that then would facilitate them to coexist and to use it for their benefit? We have a lot of places in this country where you have pasture on the one hand in plenty and water also in plenty. But these places are no go zones. Why? Because the governance mechanisms that exist, the way in which the communities can access these resources need to be revisited. The communities need to find ways of cooperating so that this resource that is available in certain places but inaccessible can be accessed. Uh, but beyond that, so this is about the, the obvious conflict issues that we interact with on a daily. But we also have other underlying tensions that also exist, that also have to do with um, who, how is this water distributed? I think um, a while back there was the whole conversation about water that comes to Nairobi mm -hmm. and where it is coming from and who has the right and so on. So again, the distribution becomes very important. And when we talk about distribution, then it is beyond the water as a resource mm -hmm. to also who are the other players within this particular sector, the private sector, mm -hmm. what is their role? We also know that the private sector in Nairobi plays a critical role in supply of water, including the water that we have to buy when. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, starting to think about the role of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And I think um, finally, uh, the correlation that um, I think is also really important to start thinking about is on the resources that are within the water, mm -hmm. on the fisheries resources and mm -hmm. so on. And um, I don't know if Faith um, would want to speak about this, but even as we talk about the resources within Lake Trukana, for instance, the fish, who has fishing rights? Where? Where <laughs> is the bulk of the Lake Trukana? And how are we then relating around the fishing resources? Mm -hmm. So you talk about distribution, you talk about the resources that exist, you talk about um, overall management, the governance aspect, but um, also who um, accesses, who, use, who has used rights, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that is how then the conflict starts to you know, play out. And yes, indeed, Faith, uh, a lot has been directed towards you with regard to Lake Turkana, who accesses it, the fish there, who's selling it, who's fishing there, how are we taking advantage of that water to get to the people. But that will come to you, Faith, after this short commercial break. Don't go too far when you come back. We go straight to Faith as she responds and also Buona PS as, she as he gives us his views. Don't go too far. We'll be back with much more.